you able to or shall I try? All right, excellent. Thank you so much. All right, I will try and share my slides. Yeah, sorry, one second. Uh, I I cannot hear you. Yeah, did anybody say anything? Okay. All right. Okay. So I. Uh, I hope you can see my slides. Can. All right, thank you. I, not, I, I get worried. OK, fine. OK, excellent. OK, fine. So generally, uh, I'll first start with the structure of final exam and basically what you need to know for the final exam. All right, so um, I, I think your FAR 5 paper will be the following Monday, which is 18th of January. All right, uh, and uh, basically, uh, you know that 15 minutes, 15 minutes before the exam, you will have to join uh, whichever platform that we're using. I will try and use Google Meet and uh, emails. Sorry, can you please mute your mic, please? All right, thank you. All right, unless you need to ask any questions, then please unmute your mic, okay? So, uh, you know uh, that unfortunately we have to carry out modular exams. All right, uh, there are four questions. Uh, question one is set by me. Question two, three, and four are set by Dr. Hafiz, right? So the coverage will be based on what Dr. Hafiz has covered. Since each question, oh, that's odd. Sorry. Oh, yeah, sorry. This is the one that I want to share with you, all right? Since each question is 25 marks, all right, 25 marks, so the duration of the exam is 45 minutes and submission time uh, to submit at the end of each question is 10 minutes. All right. Uh, it is unfortunate, but we have to use modular format. OK. Um, OK, so this is what uh, I wanted to share. I will we will use the Google Meet platform because I think for many of you, Google Meet is uh, uh, better than um, uh, and uh, then Zoom. All right, so uh, I will have assistance in opening Google Meet and also uh, basically in order to avoid the problems of uploading into Google Classroom and so on, I would prefer to go back to the old method, uh, primitive method of using email, all right, email. So um, basically question one, uh, each of the questions will be emailed to you at the respective times, and then uh, you will email your answers after scanning, um, after scanning, all right, and each section, so please make sure you know uh, your sections. Each section will um, uh, will email a different email. All right, so you can take note if you're from section one, you will send uh, your answers to this specific email. Uh, section two will send to section two Gmail. Section three will send to section three Gmail. OK, so this is easier for me to monitor and also easier for you to check what you have uploaded. All right, so once you have scanned, you upload on your email before you email me. Please check that you have uploaded the whole answer. OK, so if your answer is two pages, make sure both two sheets, two pages are there. It has been scanned. Your writing is legible. Everything is clear. All right, then you send the email. 
after you send the email as well, you can go to your send folder, check again. All right, is everything sent? Right, and very important, please do not send multiple emails. Right, because I will look at the number and then I will go through um, uh, to make sure that everyone has basically that I will go through your emails, right, to make sure that everyone has submitted. All right. Um, uh, this is because I heard that sometimes. Sorry, do you have a question? All right. This is because I, I heard that sometimes there is a problem uploading uh, on Google Classroom if many people upload at one time. All right. So just give me a second to see if everyone's okay. All right. Okay, fine. All right. Okay. So, um, and uh, as I go through your email, I can verify if there's attachment. Okay. Uh, of course, I cannot verify if your answers are complete. So therefore, uh, you have to make sure that Whatever you have scanned and uploaded onto the email is uh, legible, it is clear, and it's complete. All right. Just like you are submitting a physical uh, answer uh, to me, all right, but in four parts. All right. So uh, once you have submitted the answer, you cannot. Um, uh, you, uh, yeah, so once you have submitted the answer, you cannot say that, oh, you forgot this or you forgot that, right? So please be very careful. Don't be too hasty in sending your email, right? Uh, you have ample time uh, because hopefully email, each one of you have different emails, so there shouldn't be a problem or a jam of uploading, right? Uh, I understand that internet connection may be a bit slow, if there is such a case, then at the time that if your email is just uploading and uploading and uploading, it's uh, it's okay. Just go to, just take a photo of, uh, just or whatever you have scanned, just WhatsApp me. All right, whatever you have scanned, just WhatsApp me. Uh, if your email uh, is uploading very slowly, right? Okay, but uh, I know that eventually. I will receive that email, okay? So, but um, just as a precautionary measure, if you are concerned that the, your email is too slow, then you just WhatsApp me your uh, scanned answer, okay? All right, um, okay. Now, okay, I am telling you what is coming out in question one, okay? So there is only one choice, right? Because everything else has been covered in your midterm exam and um, uh, yeah, and conceptual framework you also have done uh, for uh, a group exercise. So basically what is left for question one is chapter 10 and it will be a case. All right, so please read the case carefully. All right, uh, it's about maybe a little over two pages, but you know that a lot of the information is just uh, to give you some background and so on. So it is up to you to extract the relevant details, right? And you have to read the question carefully and please do not jump to any conclusions. Just because you see something familiar doesn't mean that it is what you think. You have to make sure that you read the question carefully and you actually understand and answer what is asked. OK, so please follow instructions precisely. It is um, uh, more important now because not only will I put up your questions, I will also include the instructions of what to remind you what you should do during the submission time. OK, uh, so there may be instructions before the exam starts, instructions during the exam, between the submission period and so on. All right, so um, you have to follow instructions precisely. Uh, precise, precisely. Okay, so um, of course the questions, please refer to um, uh, the allocated marks. You know that question one will have sub-questions. 
All right. Uh, so question one totals 25 marks. So there will be sub questions. So you have to answer according to what is asked. All right. Um, especially in accounting. And this is accounting paper. You do not have to write too much. All right. You don't have to compose essays and so on. There will be calculations. All right. So normally I go through theory with you, but in your final exam, there will be calculations, not only from Dr. Hafiz this part but from this chapter as well okay so please answer the question and nothing but the question all right so that's why it's very careful uh, it is very important for you to understand what is the question and then just answer that question okay so if they just ask you for calculations then you just calculate right you don't have to analyze explain tell stories no need if they ask for the calculation you do the calculation if they ask you to explain you explain you don't have to calculate right or sometimes they ask for both then you have to do both right so it's very important that you uh, um, you follow what the question asks okay all right so as i said coverage of for question one is chapter 10 all right, so, but chapter 10, there is a part which is an issue. So we're going through chapter 10, all right, but most of it and what is relevant, all right, for your final exam, you have already studied, okay? So I am just revising with you, all right, but before we go to the revision, I have to just give you an overview and summary of chapter 10, okay? This is, again, uh, just a reminder and a revision as well. All right. You know that historical cost has been used for many, many years. OK, so it has basically stood the test of time and historical cost is considered more objective or less subjective than other valuation methods such as current cost or fair value. OK, so uh, and historical cost basically uh, its benefits is that you can um, uh, consider or it reflects the decisions made by management. So they are related to the past because uh, historical cost uh, is basically um, making a decision on what would what is the cost incurred all right when they they buy that asset or they make that asset, produce that asset. So the issue is, you know that historical cost, if they decided to buy that asset, all right, that is the cost of purchase, all right, and installing that asset, okay? So it is, it reflects the past decision of management. And you know that past costs can be used to project future costs, all right? And that's what budgeting uh, does. Basically, we know what is the cost, all right, in the current year, and we try to project future costs. So generally, this is how historical cost is useful. And it also reflects the stewardship of management. So basically, whether they have uh, utilized their uh, management abilities and uh, basically um, manage this historical cost or this cost properly, okay? So historical cost reflects what management has done in the past. So we know that historical cost has, test, uh, has uh, stood the test of time, but it has also been criticized. And the main two criticism is these two, all right? First is that historical cost does not reflect how investors would make their investment decisions. Because as you have gone through finance, you know that generally in order to make investment decisions, we will use the present value of future cash flows. All right. So we will um, value uh, the decision using present value of future cash flows. Right. So historical cost is not used uh, under these circumstances. And uh, you know that once, um, let's say even a year later, the value of that asset or whatever you have bought would have changed by then. It is no longer at its historical cost. Now this is uh, even after one year, 
All right. So even after uh, the company has uh, depreciated that asset, uh, it doesn't mean that that depreciation rate will actually equate to the value of that asset, okay, as time passes. So that is the problem with historical costs, right? And you know all this, okay? So for a long time now, people have started, have talked about, right? Have talked about current cost accounting, right? So you can see that uh, scholars like Peyton uh, and so on, Edward Bell, Chambers, Sterling, right? You may not have heard of them, all right? But um, uh, many accounting uh, scholars, all right, professors, uh, know these people to be intellectuals and uh, accounting scholars, right? So they have debated this issue for a long time. You can see how long, all right? And they have proposed current cost accounting, right? Long time ago, okay? So this uh, idea of current cost accounting is actually a predecessor to what we have now, fair value accounting, and along with it, comprehensive income concept. OK, in fact, in the UK, a current cost accounting standard was actually issued. All right. And if I recall correctly, it was around the 1970s and so on. But it was found to be too complicated. So generally, at first, the uh, the uh, standard was enforced. But because there was too um, many criticisms. Finally, it dwindled and became quiet and there was no enforcement on current cost accounting. And basically, the companies, uh, uh, it never took off, basically, right? This idea of current cost accounting, right? Now, if you want to know why it is so complicated, you can see that there are examples, there are calculations in Chapter 10. All right. And at first, I was thinking of showing you these examples and explaining these examples to you. Right. But the issue is when I thought about it, it is not so practical but because we don't use it. Right. So there is no point in uh, for me. I feel that there is no point in teaching you something that uh, we don't intend to use, all right? Because uh, now we have already moved to fair value accounting, all right? So uh, I thought that instead of give, giving you information that will be information overload, and I know you're all very stressed, so I would suggest if you are interested only, please read through uh, this chapter 10 and these examples after your final exam, all right? Final exam period, okay? Uh, it is good to know, all right, and uh, it is good to find out what you escaped from, all right, um, that you don't need to really uh, practice now, okay? So, but only read it as a matter of interest after you finish uh, your final exam period, all right, uh, maybe like a, a storybook or something, all right, this part of what um, the accounting practices that you do you avoid all right uh, uh, having to uh, implement okay right so we know now so let's look at what we are currently using because this this is more important right so this is a refresher because you know you have uh, done this before you know about historical costs you know about fair value you have done it i think in far three all right uh, if not far four i i can't recall uh, which far, all right, and you know about uh, value in use, all right, and current costs, okay, the only distinction between, generally distinction between fair value in, and current cost is one is to sell, all right, it is the price in selling, all right, fair value is the price in selling, whereas current cost is the price in buying or replacing an asset, okay, so again, since this is uh, something to recall, I will uh, refresh you, all right, just in case, because this is uh, important for you to um, remember, all right. So before that, uh, we have some issues. You know that generally historical costs will be equal to current costs, right, at the point of purchase, okay. So um, uh, basically on the day of purchase, all right, it is the 
current cost because it is the um, the price that you buy at. OK, and current cost is equal to fair value again at the point of purchase, but for generic assets, assets that you can generally trade. All right. Uh, at market price. All right. There's abundance of these um, abundance of these uh, uh, items. OK, so generally uh, in the market um, on that date, the selling price will equal to the buying price. OK, um, OK. But you know that there are conditions where there are certain items where even on the purchase date, the selling price is not equal to the buying price. Right. So very uh, easy example is currency. Let's say if you want to, uh, um, let's say visit Korea. OK, uh, on a holiday. Right. This is will be after the COVID period. Inshallah. One day soon, I hope. Let's say if you want to go and visit Korea on a holiday, all right? You go to the um, uh, money exchange, all right? Um, and when you want to buy, right, uh, the Korean won, right? Basically, you buy on that date, and it's a specific price. But at the same date, on the same date, if you want to sell it back to the uh, let's say you bought too much, so you want to sell back to the um, uh, the money exchange, all right, uh, currency exchange, and then it will not even on that same day, maybe at the same time, you know that the buying and selling price of the currency is not the same, all right. So there are cases where uh, that's why the current cost will not be right and never be equal to the selling price, which is the fair value. All right, so this is something that you have to keep in mind. All right. OK, so these are some examples uh, just to refresh. All right, uh, I know this is very easy. OK, so uh, let us go through very quickly. All right, but I'll give you maybe five minutes uh, to quickly calculate this by yourself as well. All right, I'm also trying to get a um, uh, um, kind of a, a book. Right, so that I can also calculate. Right, so okay. Right, so a machine was bought. In, so this is an example, and this is similar to an example in the book. Right, but uh, I'm okay. But you have to please. Uh, I didn't want you to refer to the book because I am worried that you will see all these examples related to uh, current cost accounting, which is complex, which uh, will confuse you further. All right, so that's why I am uh, giving you some examples. So I would prefer that you, ref if you wanted to recall it, please refer back to your FAR one textbook, your FAR, uh, your FAR three textbook. Uh, sorry, the textbook that you use in FAR three. All right, uh, for fair valuation and so on. Okay, okay. So now this is very easy. So I don't think you need to refer back to your textbook. OK, now uh, a machine was bought all right, in January 2015 for 24,000. It is expected to have a useful life of seven years and a residual value of uh, 3,000. All right. So assuming that straight line uh, depreciation is used, right, then it's very easy. OK, so what will you do first? If uh, you remember your historical cost, you will uh, take the cost, all right? Of twenty four thousand minus three thousand, all right, uh, which is the residual value, and divide it by the useful life, right? So uh, you should get three thousand. Uh, the rate of depreciation would be three thousand ringgit per annum. Right? Is that right? Yes. All yes, right. Thank you. All right. Okay. You. I'm sure you've all got that. All right. Now, where it becomes and to tell you the truth, because I've been marking, all right, um, not FAR 5, but uh, the predecessor of FAR 5, accounting theory and policy exams for so long, the issue is students, because they see something easy like this, they make careless mistakes, all right? So for one thing here is when they calculate accumulated depreciation, right? They do quickly, quickly. They see 2015, they see 
maybe 2017 and they jump and they say it is three years. All right. But uh, sorry, they say two years, 2015, 2017, they say two years. And then they make the mistake of calculating the accumulated depreciation as 3000 times two. OK, but you know that since the machine was bought in January 2015, you have to calculate 2015 as one year, 2016 and 2017 as three years. So therefore, um, based on that, you have the uh, you can calculate the historical cost. All right. Uh, or the net book value. Sorry, the net book value, uh, net book value as at. 31st December 2017 would be uh, the cost. All right. Please remember to take the 24,000, not the 21,000, right? 24,000 minus the accumulated depreciation. Okay. Now, another reminder is let's say the uh, value of the asset has changed. All right. Um, so if there's, uh, let's say in um, to this is two thousand. So let's say in two thousand eighteen. All right. Uh, there's either impairment or revaluation of the asset. Then basically, if you have to calculate the depreciation for the following years, you need to make sure that you use the new value which is the impaired value or the revalued value, right? And the uh, this value would be depreciated for the remaining useful life. So if you have used the asset for, let's say, three years or two years, for however many years, so the remainder useful life would be uh, the remainder, all right? So seven minus the two years or seven minus the three years, all right? Then you will depreciate accordingly. All right, so you have to remember this, all right? So if you see an easy question like this, please uh, just be careful, all right? Okay, I know it is very easy, but just because it is easy, please uh, do not make careless mistakes, all right? This is gifts for you, all right? Gifts for you. All right, so it, when we come to valuation as well, it could be historical cost, it could be fair value. So a revision of fair value, and I've only highlighted the very main, the key issues, right? Uh, okay, um, you know that fair value is the price upon selling. You would choose the highest and best price if there's a choice, right? The easy way to remember, and I tell my students before, the easy way to remember fair value is think about you selling an asset, a potential asset, okay? So you would consider, if you were to sell the asset, of course you would like to sell it at the highest and best use price, okay? So, um, and uh, you always have to con condition, uh, consider the market conditions. So let's say, for example, uh, basically uh, the market will value the asset in a specific way, then generally you have to take these conditions into account in valuing the asset, okay? Now, there are valuation techniques, all right? Uh, market cost and income valuation techniques, but where people get com con confused is about this fair value hierarchy, okay? Now, generally, these are techniques just to value, all right? So the market uh, is based on uh, the valuation methods or techniques that uh, we will take into account the market uh, conditions, all right? And market um, uh, figures and values, all right? Um, and then generally you have the cost, which is related to the replacement and income, which is uh, basically the uh, present value of future cash flows all right now the more and so all these are just methods okay what is more important is what is the figures that you put into these techniques so these are just generally calculations and what are the figures that you can put into these calculations and that's why they are called inputs right the values that are the figures that you will uh, plant in the calculation methods in order to get your valuation okay, or the value of that asset.
okay so um level one input is when you get these figures from an active market so these are considered the most um objective or observable uh, values all right because you can get that figure or that number for an identical asset in an active market so you know that that is the fair market price for that specific asset and that is the highest quality or level one okay uh, number that you can insert into these valuation methods but if you cannot get this quality of level one then you have to go on to level two where you can get the number or the value for a similar asset okay so not identical but similar asset or it is level two because it is an inactive market so you might get uh, the value for the identical asset but at an inactive market so the prices are not updated okay in an in tech inactive market the price of the asset is not updated so that's why it falls to level two but if you don't even have level two then you have to move on to level three where you get the numbers that you're going to plot in into these valuation techniques from estimates all right so estimates you have maybe actual cultural calculations all right you have um uh, various calculations that has been done to get these figures to put into these evaluation methods all right so this is the general um general um, revision that you have to know for fair value. If you want to uh, revise in more detail, please refer back to your uh, the um, the topic on fair value. I think that you covered in FAR three. Okay. So this is an example of a past year, uh, similar to a past year question. So I did not take the past year identically, all right, uh, because we won't have time to cover it. But this is similar to a past year question. And this is um, from, as I said, uh, the accounting theory and policy course, right, which is the predecessor to the FAR 5 course, okay? So you have a... A specialized machine right it was constructed in January 2018 all right by the company for 17,000 ringgit all right so the the price to build that machine was 17,000 ringgit it is expected to have a useful life of six years and no residual value all right the machine produces goods worth 100,000 ringgit per annum and it is expected to do so for its useful life all right so for the full six years it is expected to um, uh, produce this 100,000 uh, ringgit worth of uh, goods every year, okay? And the market interest rate is 10%, right? So generally, some things, this some, uh, question similar to this was asked to the students, all right? At the end of 2019, the manager thinks that it, this machine is impaired, all right? Uh, and as the accountant, all right, generally, uh, you are asked to consider what is the most appropriate valuation method for this machine, Right now, please think about it. All right, the uh, in answering the question, many of the students referred back to what they learned in fair value. All right, so fair value. So they put in, or uh, they discussed about all these issues: is uh, highest and best price. Okay, the valuation techniques, fair. Value. So uh, to try to get identical asset, active market, and so on. And this is the issue about the case. Would you agree with them if you started explaining about fair value here? What do you think? Would you have answered in the same way? You start explaining about fair value. Sorry, just simple. Yes, you would start explaining about value or no? Yes. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. 
No measure. Yes. All right. Why? All right. No, because they, they forget. Remember, it's a specialized machine. It was constructed. All right. So do you think they can sell that machine? No. Most likely not. All right. It's special for the company. And you know that it will be, there will be no, generally, there is no residual value as well. So most likely. There is a possibility that you could sell, all right, this machine, but most like after a year, but most likely no. So it, since fair value is talking about um, normally selling the machine at the market, all right, so you would not do use that. And what would be more appropriate, although uh, what would be more appropriate is the present value of future cash flows, which is your value in use. If you remember impairment of assets, all right? When you learn impairment of assets, you have learned value in use, right? So they should, uh, the accountant is what is more logical is to use value in use to calculate this, all right? Value in use to calculate. And as I said, although value in use could be part of uh, the valuation techniques of fair value, all right? But it is uh, the the basically they will not. They may most likely they will not be able to sell this asset in the market, all right? So they should have calculated value in use. Okay, so just to recall as well, all right? So um, please, okay. So, uh, sorry, sorry, I'm supposed to go back, go back, go back, go back. Okay, all right, okay. So, all right, please can you take five, ten minutes to calculate your value in use? Okay, and if there's anything missing, you, uh, any information missing that you need, please uh, let me know, all right? So this is just to check whether you recall how to calculate value in use. All right. So while you calculate as well, I will also calculate.
Okay, are you done? Yes, we're done. Do you need a few more minutes or you're okay? You're done. Sorry, I cannot hear you. Done, yeah. All right, okay, thanks. All right. So it's it's actually very easy if you know um, uh, basically what valuation technique to use. So if you recall, this is related to finances, the present value of future cash flows. You know that you want to calculate at the end of 2019, right? So 2019, that means you uh, you constructed the asset in 2000, beginning of 2018, and it has six years useful life. So you have used it up in 2018 and 2019, right? At the end of 2019, basically there are only four years left because you have already used it up for uh, two years, right? So then, uh so what you have to do is uh you know that there is hundred thousand ringgit generated each year by this asset so you put the hundred thousand ringgit at the end of um uh, at the end of each year each remaining year so since there's four years you put hundred thousand four times uh, at the end of each remaining year and you have to discount it. So the easiest way, of course, to start with the discounting of uh, uh, from the earliest year, which is end of 2020 to the end of 2019, right? So basically 100,000 will be um, uh, discounted by 1.1. Now, how do you get 1.1? You know that it is 1 plus the interest rate, which is 10%, uh, so 0 0.1, all right, to the power of uh, how many years you have to discount. In this case, you just discount for one year, so 1.1 to the power of 1, it is 1.1, okay? All right, so do you get 9909? Yes, madam. Yes, madam. All right, very yes, good. So then for the second year, all right, so for 2021, you know that you have to discount from 20, end of 2021 to 2020, then from end of 2020 to 2000, uh, 2019. So basically, you discount for two years. So um, you know that it's 100,000 divided by 1.1, to the power of two because you have to discount for two years that's why it is power of two similarly right uh, from the end of 2022 that means you discount by three years so you divide by 1.1 to the power of three and finally for 2023 Right, you discount for four years, so therefore it will be a hundred thousand uh, divided by one point one to the power of four. Okay, so I have to stop here for a while so that I can add uh, the numbers here, right? So that you can all see. Right, so the first figure you got ninety nine oh nine. Right, so please round up. Normally, the questions will tell you to round up to the nearest ringgit. All right, so that is 9909. The second one, do you get 82645? Yes, madam. All yes, right, madam. excellent. Okay, yes. third, third is, do you get 75131? Yes. yes. Yes, madam. Okay, brilliant. All right. And finally, 68301. Is that right? Yes, yes. madam. Yes, yes, madam. Yes, okay, madam. very good. Okay, so you remember. And then when you add it all up, what do you get? Is 
that right? Or did I? Yes, yes, madam. Yes, oh, all right. Okay, very yes, good. Madam. Okay, I thought uh, because I am calculating using my uh, my handphone, my calculator has no battery anymore, so I was worried that I that I miscalculated. All right, excellent. Okay, so generally, this is the idea. The more important thing is to know how many years. Uh, that you still need to use the asset and then you discount it at the correct discount rate. All right. OK, so well, if you remember this, then that's very good. And generally, that is what you need to know for valuation. Right? Very simple historical cost, fair value, value in use. OK. All right. Do you have any questions up to this point? No, madam, so far, okay. All right, excellent. All right, so as I said, this is just a revision uh, because you have done all this before, right? But you have to be uh, confident to recall all this, all right? Because this is the final FAR paper and uh, you have to recall what is fundamental, what is important. Okay, now, oh, sorry, okay, this... Just a reminder, uh, during this, uh, the exam period is going to start. I know that you're all very busy. Please uh, remain contactable, all right? Um, because it's very important. I cannot see you. I need, I may have to WhatsApp you. I, I may send messages through a Google Classroom and even, uh, I may even resort to Aitaklim, all right? I don't know how well it will work, but I'll be using various methods if I need to contact you, all right? Um, of course, definitely WhatsApp, all right? Um, but it will be good if you are uh, contactable, all right? So I know that you are okay. Uh, and if you need any consultation as a group please let me know i will arrange all right i only have a, a the exam on monday uh, 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 exam on monday for uh, business ethics and corporate governance all right then other days i will be busy marking and i know there are some other meetings but i will make time for all of you if you need a consultation or anything but unfortunately i can only consult you on Question one, okay? I'm really sorry about that uh, because I worry, I worry that for the other questions, I do not want to give you the wrong in information or confuse you further, right? Because sometimes in accounting, uh, different people prefer different, uh, different uh, ways of approaching something. So I do not want to confuse you because Dr. Hafiz will be marking question two, three, and four. All right, so um, I, I can only help you maybe uh, with question one, okay? All right. Uh, is there anything else you would like to ask? Um, but madam. Yes? Sir, Hafiz haven't like um, guide us on the question, question two, three, and four? Um, but he has given you the coverage of the exam, right? Basically, I think whatever that he has taught you will be covered in the exam. He's, uh, I think so, right? Um, do you want me to ask him? Right, hold on, let me let me switch. Let me close this so that I can I can yeah. Yes, Okay, so I will try, all right, because he, I know he's very, very busy, all right, so uh, sometimes it's difficult for me to contact him, right, but I could ask him what, uh, what, uh, what should I tell, uh, uh, or he, I will tell him to inform all of you what is the coverage of the exam. At least he can WhatsApp you the relevant topics. Would that be agreeable? Yes, because he only yes, said that madam. you will explain. Everything. Sorry again. So he only said that you will explain everything. Oh, okay. So okay. yeah, okay. I thought you would tell us. Hmm. Yeah. 
no, I, I would, no, I would explain. I, well, okay, I told him that I would explain about how the exam would be uh, carried out. So the procedures for the exam, right? So generally, I know that uh, generally um, in the exam, the coverage, because you see the second half of the exam, uh, sec, sorry, the second half of the semester basically has not been assessed. All right, so the topics for the second half of the semester has not been assessed in the exam. I got a midterm exam, all right, but uh, for the coverage of the second half, you were not exam uh, individually, so there was no individual exam. So generally, I know the coverage is uh, the 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 whole uh, coverage, right? But I also understand that all of you. Um, well, I've have very limited revision period. All right, so I know that it may help um, uh, to 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 focus on the topics. All right, focus on the topics. So what I can ask is what exactly is covered. I can ask and uh, whether he can uh, just maybe WhatsApp all of you uh, the specific topics that you should focus on. All right. All right. All right, Ma'am. Okay. Thank you. All right. Okay. Thank you. All right. So, if anything, yeah, just please uh, let me know. Uh, all right. And um, um Madam. Yes. This question in the chat box saying, oh, oh, yeah. asking that. Yeah. About the email. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you. Right. So we do not have to read current cost accounting for our final exam, right, madam? Yes. Don't don't read it. Okay. Uh, I have already covered what you need to know about current cost accounting. All right. What you need to know for your final exam, I have covered it in the slides just now. I will upload uh, the slides by tomorrow, inshallah. All right. Um, uh, but okay, just since you are accounting students, it is important to uh, know to know your past all right and as i said what you have avoided all right practicing or implementing so it is good to know before you graduate at least a little bit of history all right so but do that after all right after your exams uh madam what would be best to put a subject on email metric number uh okay very good question thank you so much i was going to put it i will put it in as i was going to uh, put it as an instruction all right but generally it would be good to put your metric number and your section uh, and the question number all right um so i will put it all in the instructions in your question paper itself. So your question paper will have your question and under there when you submit, I will have a box and then write the instructions in the box. So you don't mistake the instructions in the box for your question, okay? All right. Um, uh, all right, okay. So uh, I think the last, last question uh, here is, uh, is the case study in chapter 10? No. It will be given during the exam, all right? During the exam time, so the, you will see that actually the calculations uh, involved are relatively simple, all right. But you need time to go through the case, all right? Okay, you need time to read through the case, um, all right. Uh, so uh, and extract the uh, relevant in information uh, from that case, all right. So, but it's not so difficult to to uh, to to go through, right? I, I would suggest uh, this is a tip, but uh, everyone has different methods. Just run through, glance through uh, the case, read it very quickly in about five minutes or so. Glance through the case, then go to the questions. What does the question want? Then go back to the case and then highlight the details relevant to the questions okay so that would be um, uh, that would be uh, what i would recommend right so you don't go don't you don't go don't read the details that 
don't read the details that are is unnecessary in detail all right but you just get an overview of the case first and then uh, read the questions and then look for the uh, relevant uh, information to answer to calculate and so on okay all uh, right the question will you upload the slide discussed tonight in the google classroom uh okay Inshallah, okay, I will try. I'm a bit tired today uh, because unfortunately, as I mentioned, my mom wasn't well as well. So I nearly did not make it to the class, right? But but um, but uh, I will try. Inshallah, after this, I will try and upload, uh, upload the slides. And uh, if possible, uh, uh, the, the, the recording is also there. Okay, but I will try and upload the sites on Google Classroom tonight, inshallah. Okay? All right. Okay, any other questions? Anything that you are... Oh, another thing I have to say is, please, all right, you cannot type the answers. You have to write. So please write legibly, all right? And in calculations, I know that uh, actually it is easier to write. So uh, if I could write, if I had could show you like the value in use, uh, just as I write on the board, it would have taken me, let's say less than five minutes, all right, to prepare. But since I had to draw the lines and all sort of things, it took me about 20 minutes to draw the lines and so on uh, just now. So it was very annoying, all right? Uh, I wish I could have drawn it for you uh okay but um uh but that is the issue so i would prefer you write don't waste time right you just sometimes that if there's value in use question and so on if if there is all right it's easy for you just to sketch quickly all right and get the right answer okay all right okay uh, any other things anything else all right madam yes um, what about the other twenty percent? Ii, tak tahu dia macam mana kita orang handle handle question itu. Oh, okay. Hello. Uh, hello. All right. Yes. Huh? Okay. Yeah. The other twenty yeah. percent, I think, is from Doctor Hafiz, isn't it? Oh, okay. Right. The group exercises that you did. You did a group exercise, okay. right? Well, Doctor Hafiz. Yes. Yes, yes, all right. Yes, yes. So, yeah, the 20% is from Dr. Hafiz. Um, mm -hmm. Right? Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, okay. So, um, yeah, I, as I said, he's very busy. Inshallah, I'm sure I know he is, he is working very hard to to give you that 20% before your final exam, right? So, hopefully, inshallah, within this few days, uh, he he and I can upload the remainder of the tw that that twenty percent. All right. Okay. So uh, uh, actually, he uh, he is your lecturer for section one and section two. I know it's a bit silly because we are uh, actually in a mass lecture class, right? But he officially is your lecturer for section one and section two and i'm the lecturer for section three so i have control in uploading marks for section three only All right so that's why i had to send him the marks quickly for section one and section two and he was uploading it uh section one and section two's marks and i was trying to upload the section three marks all right um into the system all right. So basically, uh, once he has finished the 20 percent, he will share it with me and then uh, he will also upload uh, it into the system. And then uh, I will also upload uh, it for section three, inshallah, when he gives me the marks. All right. Any other things? If not, I think we're all tired and I think you're you are ready to start your revision have you finished all your classes by 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 actually it's supposed to be by yesterday right yes ma yeah this is the last class all right okay so all the best for your exam all right uh i will be praying for all of you all right for all your exams not only for far five okay all right so take care good night 
right? I will try and upload this uh, the slides by tonight, inshallah. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Madam. 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 Thank you,